to see you all here. Uh, so, some faces I know well, some new faces. Uh, my name is James Tracy. My day job is I work at Community Housing Partnership, which, just like TNDC, provides housing in this neighborhood and um, quite, quite a few others. And uh, But I'm, I'm mainly here just as a former Tenderloin resident who has never been able to fully leave the Tenderloin. Uh, I really love this neighborhood. I first started co coming here as a teenager. I think I was the only only teenager I know that ever took summer vacations in the Tenderloin oh. because my uh, my favorite uncle, who was a veteran of the Sailors Union of the Pacific, lived at the Old Essex Hotel, lived at the Arlington, uh, that's now the Youth Hostel, uh, lived here, and I came and visited him, and he taught me the history of this great neighborhood and this great city, and I've never been able to fully leave, even though uh, I have lived in se several different neighborhoods since, but that's San Francisco housing chase for you. So we're really lucky to be here uh, today. The Alliance for a Better Dis uh, District 6, the Central City Democrats, really hold it down every year and try to just make sure that their um, their community communities are educated about what's on the ballot and that their endorsements ref uh, their endorsements reflect the will of anybody who has the uh, the ability and the um, and the caring of their community to show up. Give a part of their evening, come be educated, and cast and cast a vote. It's really demo democracy, and it's a very, very basic de the democracy of the community room, the democracy of the street corner. And even though we have very few people here today, I, I assume that we'll all make some really good, good choices, and the people will um, will go and educate their uh, their their neighbors and their community members about what's going on. So just to be clear. Tonight, this first part from six, from six to eight is just all about the issues, right? It's not about who you, who you like for candidates. It's not who, if you think Ross Mercury should be impeached or if he should get his job back. It's all about the things that we that, that we need, the things that we care about in common, like water, like housing, um, like taxation, things like that that we all have that we all have a, a stake in jobs. So from six to eight, we're just talking talking about the issues, and we've got a few issues. But before that, we are very uh, lucky to be uh, visited by uh, folks from the Department of Elections. So we'll uh, just um, take 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 us through the, the voting the voting process in San Francisco, educate us to what's going on. And then, if you care to stick around, at eight o'clock will be the actual endorsement meeting, where you can cast a vote for. Uh, with the Central, Central City Democrats uh, will make that as their final endorsement on these, on these things and a few people they may show up. Uh, if history is any lesson, people tend to show up in droves when, uh, when it's all about the personalities and very few dedicated, amazing people like yourselves tend to come and really dig in on the issues. We will, uh, after the Department of Elections, I will give you a very brief review of everything that's on the ballot as nonpartisan, as unbiased as I could possibly muster, because I have a very partisan heart, but uh, I have, a, have more of a respect for democracy, so I will try to, try to do that. And then the folks from the uh, from the different campaigns that I'm here to show up will give their little two or three minute elevated speech. This is why you should why you should vote my way. Is that cool with everyone? All right. Well, without further, first of all, let's uh, thank. Michael and Joel Melty and Dennis Eisner, and um, my new friend Marvin out there. Give them a round of applause for responsible uh, <laughs> of the Tenderloin for 20 something years now. And um, anything else that I could ever get to add when we get the pizza? Oh, we're not time for Okay, about 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah. After the election, folks, grab I'm a Trying piece. to go fast. Yeah, exactly. Alright. So they might they might not have the have have the jobs that grab the headlines. They might not have the sexiest jobs in San Francisco, but they do a great job at uh, making 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 sure that what we have is the democracy is running and uh, giving us giving us a platform to uh, to participate and, and improve what we got. Please put your hands together for the Department of Elections. I'm Jill Fox from the Department of Elections and my colleague Nestor Aguelas. Uh, does anyone need to 
um, hear this presentation in Spanish. You can say that in Spanish. Espanol? No. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll try to get through this. I'll take questions at the end. We also can stick around. Um, we're going to be talking about November 6th. Um, we're going to try to get you informed. We are completely nonpartisan, uh, meaning we will tell you what's on the ballot, how to vote, uh, who can vote, what's on the ballot, when and where to vote in San Francisco. Uh, we'll do a little bit on uh, why you should vote. And then we'll tell you how to be a voter. Um, we passed around and we have more and we have them in Spanish and Chinese. Our handy little pocket flyer. And uh, that might be handy for you guys uh, afterwards too because if you unfold it, there's a complete list of what's on the ballot. Um, so, who can vote in San Francisco? Raise your hand if you are over 18 years old. <laughs> All right. Uh, keep your hand up if you are a U.S. citizen. All right. And if you're a resident of San Francisco. That's great. There are also some rules about uh, who can vote if uh, you have ever been convicted of a felony. Uh, it's different by different states. Uh, if that's an issue for you, please see me afterwards. Um, but basically, once you have served your time and your parole, you uh, can again register and vote in California. And we can facilitate that when you need that. Uh, and everyone needs to be registered to vote. Uh, to vote in San Francisco. October 22nd is a date you need to remember uh, to get registered or make sure other people you know are registered. That's a copy of a registration card and we have them here if you need one. Um, so you can register with me today. You can come down to our office or the, any public library. Uh, you can register online uh, and soon it will be a true online process as long as you have a California driver's license or a California ID. Within a few weeks you will be able to go on and have a paperless voting registration. Uh, but if you want to do it tonight, we have cards. Anyone here need to register to vote? You can do that while we're talking. Everybody's good? Okay. If you know anyone um, who needs to, you can take one home too and mail it in postage free. You might need to re-register if you, since the last time you voted, you have changed your name, uh, you have moved, or you want to change your political party preference. Anybody need to do it for that reason? Okay. Uh, if you're not sure if you're registered or not, you can go online to sfelections.org, and we have a way to check to see if you are registered or not. Uh, you can give us a call, or come on down to the basement of City Hall. We're there, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. So, this is the juicy part. You say we don't have a sexy job. What's on the ballot? Contests and offices. Uh, contests for offices and measures on the San Francisco ballot. We have federal, state, and local offices. We have one of the largest ballots we have had in San Francisco in many, many years. We have state measures and we have local measures. Um, most people in San Francisco will get three ballot cards. If you live in District 6, you will get three ballot cards. Um, if you live in Districts 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, or 11, you will get a fourth ballot card for the supervisor's election. So the front of ballot card 1 will have on it president, little things, the president, vice president of the United States, U.S. Senator, our representatives in Washington, uh, our representatives in Sacramento. Those four senators and assembly persons, uh, those will only have two people. This is a very different ballot than we've seen in the past. All you're getting in those are the top two. Remember in June we voted and the two top finishers in those four offices um, are what you will see on the ballot. And there is no writing candidate allowed in those four offices. 
So that's in some places in California you will see two Democrats or two Republicans or things like that um, because it's the top two finishers regardless of the party. That's a little different. And there's more. On the back of ballot card one uh, will be our Board of Education. We vote for four. I believe there's 12 candidates. We vote for the Community College Board. Again, you vote for four. Uh, and we will be voting for ARC directors. And if you live in District 7 and 9 of the BART stuff, the other two are citywide contests. Please make sure on all, every time you vote, to check the back of the car. Uh, people forget to do that, and there might be something really important there on the uh, Ballot card 2 has the 11 state measures. Yes, sir. Uh, where is the BART uh, District 7 and 9? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. I, I know we forgot our map today. Uh, your ballot, wherever you vote, will only have the things on it that you're allowed to vote for. Uh, and you can come, you can do that lookup tool online and it will tell you which BART district you're in. I apologize, we forgot our maps with all those different things today. Um, but most of the city is either BART 7 or 9. Um, and some people are... 12 and 14 for Congress, which is also a little bit different. Things have changed a little bit in the last few years. Uh, but you can use the lookup tool and it'll tell you all of that. The ballots will be where you live will be the correct ballot. Um, so ballot card two has 11 state measures on it. They are all listed by their official titles on the little flyer that we gave you. And you, as a registered voter, will be getting a booklet in the mail in mid-October that kind of looks like that. My voice, my choice. That's coming from the Secretary of State's office, and that will explain the state measures. Also on the ballot card, and this is the part you guys are really excited about, are seven local measures. One about City College, one about uh, Neighborhood Parks Bond, a housing trust fund, so consolidated odd year municipal elections, the gross receipts tax, water and environment plan, and a policy opposing corporate personhood. Now these are very odd names and maybe not what people are commonly calling these propositions. These are their real names. This is what will be on the ballot. And that's why for both the state and local measures on your flyer, these are the real names and numbers. People in 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 districts will also get the fourth card with members of the Board of Supervisors listed. Um, and you can find out about local measures, uh, local candidates uh, in our voter information pamphlet. Uh, it looks like that, and it will be coming to you in mid-October. Uh, it's, it's not quite to the printer yet, uh, but that's what the cover will look like. But right now, we're going to learn about ranked choice voting. I'll go really quickly because District 6 is not a ranked choice voting district, but in case you ever have to explain it to anyone, this is all you need to know. Mark a different candidate in each column. That's it. That's the whole deal. So, do not mark three candidates in one column. It's a little confusing because remember when we were talking about the Board of Education and the Community College Board? On those, you do vote that way. You vote for four in one column. So it's a little confusing, but for supervisors in ranked choice voting, do not mark more than one candidate in a column. Do not mark the same candidate more than once. You can, you can do that, but one, it's going to make a bad noise when you try to put your ballot into the machine. Uh, but mostly the problem is that if your candidate, the one that's green, it'll count on your first one. But on your second choice and third choice, if that candidate has been eliminated, you will no longer have a voice because you don't have a vote. We can pass this one it's blank here. Right. If you need to know more about ranked choice voting. We're not voting. District 6 doesn't vote 
ranked choice voting this time. But don't do the same candidate more than once. So just remember. But, but, mm -hmm. but your, your vote does count that first time. The first time your I vote counts. I always counts. just vote for one person. Then your so vote counted the first time. Yeah, but it does vote count but one time. Though. Yes, it does. Okay, that's all I want to know. Um, but if you wanted to vote for other people, it doesn't count. So, um, so on the first column, vote for the person you want the most. Second column, vote for the person you want second. Third, vote for the person you want third. And then that's a correct ranked choice voting ballot. What is it? Mark a different candidate in each column. Okay. So, you can get more information um, from the Secretary of State online or from the My Voice, My Choice pamphlet that will be coming in the mail from the state. Or you can go online to sfelections.org, that's us, and read. Have some nice late night reading, our voter information pamphlet. There are alternatives. Our voter information pamphlet is available in Chinese. It is available in Spanish. And it is available in large print, audio format, and in Braille. If any of those alternatives you're interested in, we have a form you can fill out, or you can always come to the office or go online and get those alternatives. You can also not get one at all and do all of your voter information pamphlet reading online. Um, you would sign up here. We can do that. It's opting out. It's going green. It's a choice you have uh, for the San Francisco voter information pamphlet. If you're interested, we have a form. Or you can go online and um, say you don't want to get your paper via uh, online, if you're interested in that, we do have it in three languages. Uh, lots of information in Chinese and Spanish. And we also have a voter toolkit that, um, sorry, a voter toolkit uh, that is the kind of nitty gritty how to vote stuff uh, in English, Spanish, and Chinese. And that's the little button. So, everybody's good? Okay, there are three ways to vote in San Francisco. You can vote early. You can vote by mail, and you can vote at your polling place on election day. Anybody vote at City Hall? It starts October 9th. You can go down to the basement. No matter where you vote in San Francisco, they will find you where you will get the correct ballot. You can vote. You can get your sticker, and you are done. Can you the day? Mm -hmm. We open October 9th. We're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. This is a really good alternative if you might be traveling or you might not know or you just want to get it over with. Also, if, you, um, you're, a poll if you're a poll worker, you need to vote this way. This is a good option if you're a poll worker uh, or an election worker. And um, it's also great if you have children or you want to show a child the voting process and it's kind of hard for them on a school day to come with you. Um, come on down to City Hall. Um, we're also open the two weekends right before the election. If you're doing that, come early. There's a line. Uh, and and uh, those last two weekends. And it's open there to vote on election day if you can't make it to your own polling place. You can vote by mail. Another good option if you're going to be busy on election day. Uh, you have to get your request in by October 30th. Uh, I have forms here. Um, you will get your vote by mail ballot in mid-October, so you have plenty of time to go through it. Uh, you'll need to review all of those materials, read your ballot cards, mark your ballot with a pen. If you make a mistake on your vote by mail ballot, contact the Department of Elections and we'll replace the ballot or have you come to City Hall. And there's more. You need to submit your ballot. Uh, that's an envelope. You need to sign the outside of the envelope if you're voting by mail. And you mail it in in time to reach us on November 6th. Not a postmark. It has to reach us before 8 p.m. on Election Day. 
There's no postage in San Francisco for ballots. That's not true everywhere in the state, but it is true in San Francisco. We pay the postage. And you can also, if you got your vote by mail ballot and then you filled it out and then you forgot to mail it and it's election day, take the envelope, seal it up, sign it, take it to any polling place in San Francisco, including City Hall, and turn it in there. That's the best way. If you vote by mail, but you forgot to mail it in, that's the best way on vote on election day. And of course, you can be a voter at your polling place. Make lots of polling places have changed this time because of the census. So when you get your voter information pamphlet, it'll say where you're supposed to vote. Um, lots of changes in numbers and polling places. Um, so look at that carefully if it's important to you. It will also say if your polling place is accessible. If it's not, contact the department. And you need it to be, contact the Department of Elections. And we can make arrangements for you. When you get to your polling place, you meet your poll workers. You sign the roster. There is no ID required, no photo ID required in any California polling place. Read the instructions on the ballot card. Mark your ballot with a pen provided. You connect the arrow. And if you make a mistake, ask a poll worker, and they will help you. Poll workers are trained. They're very nice people. It sounds like you were a poll worker. Uh, they are trained, they are civic volunteers, they have a 15-hour day, but they will answer your questions. At the polling places, there's a hotline number you can call, um, and if you have any issues at the polling place. Um, in case you've never done this, you need to review your selections. You take your ballot to a machine that looks like that. You insert each ballot card individually into the machine. The machine will make a happy sound. And then you get your sticker to walk around with pride all day long. If you have accessibility needs, uh, we have you covered. Um, we have large print, audio format information for you. And at the polling place, there are magnifiers and pen grips, large print instructions, accessible voting booths uh, that have an audio ballot. If you need help, uh, you can have two assistants help you vote uh, at a polling place as well. We want everyone to have the right to vote. If you have language needs, we have bilingual poll workers at most polling places, Spanish and Chinese, Cantonese and Mandarin. We have some polling places as, as needed by the census in Tagalog, Korean, Vietnamese. And we have trilingual materials at all polling places. So everybody got all those steps? You register, you decide where you're going to vote, you vote. So even if you're a first time voter, you don't need the ID? No. Um, your signature that on your registration card will match your signature at your uh, where you're uh, when you sign either your vote by mail envelope or the roster. And you, on the registration card, have put down either your driver's license number or your California ID number or the last four digits of your social security number. And that's how you're tracked. A lot of trust. So we have, we have time for one or two questions for the Department of Elections and we move on to some of the issues. Yeah. I, I would like to uh, I know I, I work with your office. I was going to run for the community college board, and your office was just great. Okay. And I would suggest anybody in this district uh, area who's going to run for office, I would really uh, say go for it because we have a lot of support down at the election office. So I'll uh, run next time. All right. That's good to hear. So if you need information, we have it online, we have it in the pamphlet. And one thing, one thing about the Department of Elections that separates them from almost every other city department, if you call them, an actual human being will likely answer the phone. Except may, maybe maybe not the days right before the election. And if you walk into the basement of City Hall, you will be greeted by really nice people that will endeavor to help you. And it's, it's, an, it's an amazing 
experience or anybody who's ever gone to some of the other places. Uh, not, not to dig on city workers or anything because they're mostly great people, but these guys are especially, especially accessible. So just about every, anybody who walks in there who wants, wants to uh, access the information. So uh, one more time, put your hands together for the Department of Legends. If anyone is interested,